our sins, whatever we accomplish here tonight, we we'll give you the honor and the praise and the glory. For in Christ's name we ask you. Amen.
Is there a motion to adopt the general fund proposed? No. Now that, that's the total, right? But you, they're adopting the units for the general fund and the MSP set. But the 7.2426 is the general. Can we do it all together? No. No, we have to have a motion set for the general and one for the MSP. Right. That's what I was doing. I think we did 8.46. Go ahead. I make a motion to appoint the adopted general fund. Second. 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 Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Gimp, second by Commissioner Murphy. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say sign. Motion carried. Now for the MSPU. 1.250. Yes. Is there a motion? I make a motion. Second. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Murphy, second by Commissioner Moody. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say sign. Motion carried. So that is the total millage of 8.4676. You combine the general and the MSPU. That's right. Okay. Now for the total proposed tentative budget of 49,762,613. Is there a motion? Let me see the receipt. Huh? Let me see the receipt on the back of your agenda. What it says there, the final assessment resolution for the Albany subdivision. Sorry. That's the one I need to say. Okay, the adopt final assessment resolution for the Warren Creek subdivision, Deerwood at the Beaches subdivision, Ocean Pond subdivision, Strickland's Landing subdivision, Oak Ridge Estate Unit 1 subdivision, Bowden subdivision, St. Hanky Acres subdivision, Gulf Coast Estate subdivision, and Charlotte Bay subdivision for fiscal year 2019-2020. Okay. So the final assessment resolution for Warren Creek subdivision, Deerwood at the Beaches subdivision, and Ocean Pond is set at $35 per lot per year. Strickland's Landing subdivision is at $50 per lot per year. Oak Ridge Estate Unit 1 subdivision is at $45 per lot per year. Bowden subdivision is at $83.94 per lot per year. St. Hanky Acres subdivision is at $291.59 per lot per year. Scott Bay subdivision is at $313.19 per lot per year. And Gulf Coast Estate subdivision is at $320.70 per lot per year. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt these assessments? No. Second. Okay. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say sign. Motion carries. All in favor. Adopt. Solid waste assessment for fiscal year 2019-2020 at $140 per year. Second. Okay. Motion from Commissioner Gimp. Second by Commissioner Page. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say sign. Motion carries. Item D. Adopt. Solid waste assessment for recreational vehicles or active RV power poles for fiscal year 2019-2020 at an amount equal to one-third of other dwelling units in the amount of $46.67. Any discussion? Is there a motion to adopt this solid waste? Keep it the same as it is. Madam Chair? Yes. I heard the presentation from an attorney down at Crossfield just last week. I believe you were there and a lot of you were there. And I came away with the thought that before we do anything on the assessment, we need to do what you call a waste assessment. However, a waste assessment is I would look for a 
motion to get the RV assessment on the RVs and honey camps increased it enough to at least this year generate $30,000 in revenue to pay for that study. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and have you figured about how much that would be? Well, I thought Danny ought to help me. Uh, if you uh, if you went with the RVs and hunting camps the same as everything else, that's going to generate two hundred and twelve thousand dollars, right? Now, if you went from one third up to one half, what would we generate enough money this year to pay for us? No, that would be half of um, two hundred and seventy. Yeah, forty-seven. Lawanda, was this amount set by county ordinance? Yeah. Forty-six, sixty-seven was. Okay. You can't, you can't change the ordinance without going through your public hearing process. There's a, there's a separate ordinance as it relates to hunt camps that states that the assessment shall be one third of what is charged. For, for basically all other dwelling units. So the ordinance that's in place really um, sets that as a, as a one third. So that would have to be amended? Yes. I believe so. Alright. And the, the yes. dead, deadline for this action is when? So you still going to have to certify everything to. I have three days, three days to certify. From today. Mm -hmm. Then, if, if, if this is the case, and we've been talking about this for how, much, how long now? About two years. And okay. why was it waited until the night that we're going to adopt this for this to come back up that we need an ordinance to do anything? I'm, sorry. I'm not happy with that. I'm not, I'm not. But I'm going to ask it right now and know y'all that it was done by ordinance, and y'all don't have to amend the ordinance or change the ordinance, delay, or whatever you need to do with it. I thought we right. still didn't go amended. No. Nah. This almost feels like a stunt. Yeah. All right. Why well, happens if we don't take any action on this tonight? They won't be safe. Then they'll be free, right? I would think. I mean, it. Well, how it works you got to go to the same or the, the change is amended. Repeal it, do what you're going to do. You have to go through the same process. If you do adopt in any order, have time for public hearing and all that. Well, if we want, if we want to do something different, then we'll have to uh, change the order after this budget and then uh, do it then. You can't do that. So y'all, unless you go on the page and send the notices, because the property trainers got to know what it is to send out the tax notes. They got to get that together. Those notices go out November first. So in other words, any time during the year that we decide to change the ordinance like this, we can't do it. We can't do it like this like we're going to do it, no. So we can be doing it. <coughs> well, you have to start uh, early enough to advertise the public hearing for the ordinance, adopt the ordinance, and then in the year, year round, now it's your final, final budget time. She certifies in three days. It goes to the property appraiser, the tax collector. We got the value adjustment for the process to go through it. And that, that tax will be final before, I think it's October 2016. I thought the thing was set by a resolution. Did you say ordinance? No, sir. No. The resolution set the, by resolution, you can change to 140 to 154. And then the ordinance would apply, that would be raised, the ordinance for the hunt camp, that assessment would be raised to one third of the 154. But you can't change, you can, you can only change the 140 to 154, and then the ordinance would apply to a third of the 154. And you use this all the time. You knew all the time that when we got to this point, that if we didn't have an ordinance that we couldn't do anything, is that correct? Well, come back sit down there and tell me. Hold on, I'll ask you a question. I want to know. Did you know that we needed an ordinance before tonight? Yes, ma'am. That's, that's something that we discussed.
residential, you, when you adopt it last time, your maximum is one big store. And you got it from 140 one big store without changing your ordinance. Done by resolution. This one's not done by resolution. Well, I'm definitely not going to go up over to 140. I'm not either. No, I'm not either. That's, that's part of mine for me because I got so many constituents that pay 140. Don't understand why all these people are paying 46. Yeah. I had a town hall meeting last first night. A bunch of people were there and they felt, they, again, they didn't want, they did not want us to go up on the 140, but they felt like it would be fair to do something else with the hunting camp. But, you know, we're sitting here and the five commissioners didn't understand, but we had people that understood that did not pass that information to us and make it clear that that's what we needed to do. I am not happy. Well, it makes me feel like we wasted our time when we went down to talk to you. Because, you know, whatever we learned there, it learned, it's not going to be helpful. I knew it would be a tight time frame, but I thought we could, we could do it by, by, by resolution. I didn't understand it. It's probably my fault. I don't remember as well as I used to. I know this. I don't want to spend 30 or 40 or 50,000 dollars doing a study to see if we can do it or not. Yeah. That's what we talked about in the meeting before. Yeah. I'm not in I'm not in throwing money. Again, I'm not. Well, if we wanted to do it, we can't do it tonight. All right. Yeah. So we stuck with with well, this year. We stuck with one with a forty six, six to seven for another year. But we need to get our ducks in the road and make sure when everybody's got a kitchen every house has got a kitchen, every trailer has got a kitchen. Next year it needs to be different. I mean that's just they all put out the same amount of groceries. It don't matter how many bedrooms you got, how many bathrooms. They all got a kitchen. Everybody's going to eat and they're going to have garbage. And they're going to go get done. Put trees that fall down in the yard just because they live in a campus trailer. They still going to have trees they're going to cut down and carry the dump, all that kind of stuff. Commissioner, we discussed that about uh, 25 times already. I mean, yeah. And here's where we're sitting tonight. It's, it's, it's my fault. I'm not researching a little closer. I just wish we had to research it and talk about it a little more. But we've been talking two years. At least. Going back to see, is there a motion? I make a motion to go ahead and set 46, 6 to 7 for this year, but we need to, we need to get it up in the road. I second it. But let me say this. I can't just get 22. I don't talk to nobody but myself. Anybody should have had a better understanding of yourself. But anyway, I think next year, when this time comes, we will have another race for those people using RVs in the hunting camp. I want to call the city to have well informed you, but hey, look here, we, we there now, so we need to get our chops and go ahead and meet. I ain't going to talk to nobody with that.
the county got that much, at the same time they got the 61.98 pages. That's one of those small lots, is it? Well, they're actually both about an acre. Okay, they're just split small. Now, Mr. Sand, that is all marked. That 2.8 acre that the county owns right there? That is all marked. That's all marked. But on the flat, it shows turning on First Avenue. The lot next to it that the people in Virginia own shows turning on First Avenue and on Fourth Street. If you are to close Fourth Street and First Avenue, technically, you have landlocked those two lots. Regardless of whether it is marsh right now or not, there are methods out there where you can build, you can build above marsh. There's permitting processes to do it. Now, both of those streets are 70 foot right of way. Each street comprises about an acre. If you go up to Second Avenue, that goes into your 61.98 acres. That is a 100 foot wide right of way. And if you close from Fourth Street over to your acreage, that is about one and a third acres. If you go up to Second Avenue and close that street, that is about an acre too. So all total on the request for closing the Fourth Street, you're looking at about four acres, which is a bit of acreage. Yes, it is. Mr. Spann, where is the lift station located? Is that on Second Avenue? The lift station is at the corner of Second Avenue and Fourth Street on the southwest corner. Okay. So that is, that's access to water and sewer. Right. To the county property. Is that the only access at this time? At that area. And the sewer line from the condos down there on the old Woods property actually go underneath Fourth Street to reach the lift station. And they're gravity lines. They're not pressure lines. You know what we need to do? I think that we all need to go down there and physically look at this. And we could, if we all wanted to go, we could advertise it. That's right. That we're going to all be there. And do a public notice. And let's go down and let's look at this. Let's have the map in hand. And so that way we know exactly. Because I can look at this map all day long. And I can't visualize what he's talking about until I see it. To be fair, to make it the right decision, I need to see it. I'd be glad to meet there with you any time. You could choose the time and I'll see. That's a good idea. You know, Mr. Bishop will approve. We're better off each meeting with him individually. Right. Okay. As many times as you want. So if we advertise it, it wouldn't, you know. There's some case law out there that if you go together that way, it's maybe a violation of the rules. Well, I'm not talking about riding together this meeting. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. I think it's just better than perception. But, again, individually, you need to meet with Stan so he can show you. Because I agree with you with regard to not being able to figure out again. And you keep saying 4th Street. Are you saying 4th Avenue? No, 4th Street. Was it Mark 4th Street on here? Yes. Where? I got 4th Avenue. Yeah, Street, so what is that? But it says 4th Avenue right there. It's this right here. You see what I'm talking about, Stan? Yes, I do. See, that's where I was getting confused because you kept saying 4th Street. Right. You look like you're saying right there. Well, it's 4th Avenue Northwest and 4th Avenue Northwest. And we 
this family was talked to and they were willing to work with the county at that time because that was the time that a group of residents in Steenhatchee got together and hired an architect to make one idea of the type of park or an activity that could be on that city, 61 acres mm -hmm. for the county. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how they would feel now about it, but the price should be right. And as an individual, I feel it would be a good thing to pursue that a little bit. Because once you got that preparing right in your hand, it would not matter then if it was 10 or 20 years from now that somebody got enough together to put in a fishing pier with your table and play with it. Would there be a place there for an opportunity for kayaking to, to launch a kayak or a canoe? That whole uh, southern boundary of your 61 acres, the, you can launch kayaks and canoes without putting any ramp or anything in. And when we were down there, I'll point that out. Okay, good. Good deal. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to with table number four. We'll go to number five, the board to discuss commercial refuge selection contract. Does anybody else? I'm sorry. Does anybody else want to talk about this? We don't. We don't have a deal to it anyway. That doesn't. I don't think it is. No, I don't say anything.
can, you know, hopefully make the right decision. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want, I don't want to give anybody any justice by any means. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, but it's the county's own property for over 70 yards. They don't necessarily own it. It's on paper. They don't pay taxes for it. They just it's just sitting there on paper. And the proper channel in any county you go to, I mean, all in the state of Florida, just seek a band. Just flat it out. And I'm not sure when the subdivision was done. I think it was done about the late 40s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The family that we're purchasing that property from, potentially, her father was the one that flat that subdivision. The story she told me. But regardless, uh, those two roads are the main key to getting what he wants to do now. Uh, that would that give the uh, county access to that 60 acres over there, they got some Susan or Jerry and uh, Jennifer years ago. And as far as the guy down there on the marsh, he, he's got two access to him. It looks about like that fish down there. Other than that, I think that's the that murky down there. That's his mission. He's pretty familiar with that thing out there. So we just want to do something nice with him. We want to build something to make something nice. I mean, hire him in homes. I'm sure it's not going to be trailer parks or double wide. Mm-hmm. We'll just hire him in communities where it's still good people. Like I said, we'll just fall under the letter of those traditional laws that pass. I mean, so we will. Most other states, other counties in the state, will get this proper channel. But, for asking to give it anything. We're not asking to give it anything. Right. Everything to do would be split with the condo and give them another five with the part thirty five foot of the same property. And other than that, yeah. Thank you. I'll give you a I'll probably give you a call too. Anytime. Anybody else would like to speak to this issue? Now I'm ready. I didn't mean, I wasn't trying to move around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't even talk about the trap trap or the fish trap. Hmm? Say again, though? The fish trap, John. I'm talking about it. Um, and he's not going to be here tonight, so we're going to have to take it down. We're going to go. Thank you, John. I appreciate you. Thank you, John. Okay, I don't know if you want to. We want to discuss commercial rent use collection contracts. We just wanted to bring to the board's attention that after 10 years of service with Waste Pro, that the five year extension to their original contract is coming to an end. Um, the contract ends January 31st. So the process that we will need to follow is at the next board agenda, we will have the, the documents on the agenda and request to advertise for that contract. And we haven't done this in 10 years, so we just wanted to bring it to your attention that that is the end of the contract. They had requested an extension but after a thorough review by Mr. Conrad and looking at some parts of the proposal and the contract, um, it is our understanding that we need to um, pursue a request for proposal and follow follow that method. Okay, if there are any issues or anything questionable or anything that we need and not being done or anything about this, uh, would you let us know any any data that we might need to know, um, you know, before we extend this if it comes to that or when it comes to that? Well, we can't extend. I mean, it's something that we advertise it though. They 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 reapply. That's what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. And I have not. I think I've received one complaint from um, from a. Um, from a business and it was promptly addressed by Waste Pro. I talked to their 
Larry and he can't recall any complaints. Okay. Um, we will be reaching out to other companies in the area to let them know this will go out to bid, but we are unaware of anyone who is interested in this contract. Okay. Okay. I don't have firsthand knowledge of this because I talked to um, Rwanda about this. Uh, the contract that the agreement that uh, was entered into was for five years with an automatic extension of option to renew for five years was done. The contract also provided that the proposal would be a part of the contract. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot of times with, with our bids. I don't know, uh, you can tell them what the guy told you if you want to, it's up to you, but if they try to say that, you know, that it's automatically another five years, we're going to have a problem with them because it doesn't say that. The contract says, and the proposal, which is part of the contract, says that there's an additional five years. I don't know that y'all, that your predecessors, in 2009, four files here in 2009, would be interested in a 15 year. No, that's a long time. Yeah. I mean, that, well, 10 years is a long time. I mean, it's worked out well according to what um, what um, Ms. Luana has just said. But I just want you to understand we might get some flack with regard to that, then saying that we understand that it's another option. Well, what that would be would be option, 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 and they have it forever. And no, don't do that. You say we don't do that. Are you, no, mm -hmm. we don't have a contract okay. forever. Okay. Good. Good. So we did a five year with the, uh, with the next where we could extend it for five more years, so we did that, and we're at that point now. Right. And they, they, they made one an extension for another year or something like that. And my advice to Rwanda was to say, no, let's go ahead follow the contract and re-advertise. That's my advice. Are they okay with that or not? They were under the advice that it would automatically renew. Mm -hmm. So they did not even reach out to me and say, oh, by the way, our contract coming due. I had to reach out to them and said, your contract's coming due. And they sent me sections of the proposal and were adamant that that was not the case. And I guess it had been discussed in previous discussions um, with, the, with the previous administrator. Here we go. Get to it. Get to it. Come on, let it all hang out. So when Mr. Lightsey was discussing with Waste Pro her, the possibility of curbside service, my understanding was that there was, I don't want to say a promise, that it was understood that they would have at least a three-year extension to their contract. And after reading document after document, performing an exhaustive search, searching through emails, I cannot find an agreement. Um, or, it, or even a draft.
It will work with our agenda being um, earlier in December um, rather than later. Um, that that will give us enough time to award the contract. And I mean, we'll have to hit the ground running, but so we have enough time to do this. And we will start reaching out to other waste collection services in the you know, in the immediate area and ask. And if we all know of any company who wishes to bid, please let me know and we'll reach out to them. Comment. Several years ago, what made some issue that came up about this is y'all had to negotiate on something. You may want to look at that and see if it's if something that was actually um, to be considered in a contract. I want to say it had to do with the gas prices going up and down. Oh, yeah, there was, a, yeah, there was a, something about mm -hmm. it. Uh, it wasn't CPI, but it was um, inflation for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. and I, didn't we just say we weren't going to do that? Yeah, and I was thinking maybe you want to do something in the contract to prevent that kind of issue coming up again. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a good
in my humble opinion. If you say, you know, you're going to say all county property, which includes, and we're going to list all the buildings, and list, list, yeah, we're going to do that. You want to do that? Yes, I do. What if we miss one? Well, we just miss one. Not this one. Well, I think on this it said all park county buildings, state grants, and any county owned property or buildings, and you could say except county real property if you wanted to just take your mind to it. Or you could say except any present designated parking mm -hmm. area. Right, and if you need to add one, you need to do it quickly before we pass the storm. If you do. I thought we had decided just to say buildings instead of listing the whole list out. We did that. We did that before, you know, we said that. But I got to thinking about it. That was version number four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I got to thinking about it, and I'm thinking what you do is you think offensively, and then you think defensively if I'm defending this ordinance, and some smart out lawyer comes up and says, we didn't designate something else, blah, blah, blah. I like to have it all, you know, and all encompassing except for the designated smoking area. Now, is there any penalty? What, 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 what penalty? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our cost? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 
program and uh, yeah, road map and any county on property or bill. Now you know the back I think it's in two and two.
they call the law? Well, they can call, they can call the, the, the deputy out there, or they can call mm -hmm. the uh, administrator out there. The administrator can go out and say, you know, uh, if you don't put that out, you're going to get a ticket. And then, and then, who gets that ticket? He calls the law? He calls the law, and he gets the ticket, yes. Yeah. Okay. And the same thing at a boat ramp, whatever. Absolutely. So, but in terms of our employees, um, see, that's not something that I, I want to do. I, I mean, I, I would like to rather see it. You know, you have, we have a policy and procedure, and if you're caught the first time, this is going to happen. If you're caught the second time, Maybe it's an oral um, reprimand, then a written, then a second written, and then <coughs> if you want to go to termination or whatever, but it should be a process that I don't want us to be calling the law to one of our employees. Just we can handle that. What, well, I think the personnel policy that you all have developed will handle the employee side of it. Yeah, but that be dealt with by policy. Yeah. And fifty dollars is just for the public. For the public. Or if an employee is off duty, but the employee is getting off easier than the mm -hmm. general public. Well, they may lose their job after having many of the kids that you use. That's pretty severe. Well, I'll tell you what, if I've got a close to one, I'm not very many close to one time, they slap the side of the hand, the next time they slap the other knee. Okay, so it's pretty strict. One time oh, yeah. you've got a warning, next time you're gone. Uh, That's pretty severe. You can't even carry it.
Roger. Yeah, it doesn't take that long for a ten by ten to come pretty fast. We're waiting on the supervisor to wait. Does she have that in her budget? I don't know. I I know that as far as that we're at the point where I've asked a couple of times, you know, are you ready? I think she wanted to get through whatever um, work she was doing, but I'll be happy to reach back out to her. Well, that's on the outside. Mm -hmm. I can go on simultaneously if she wants to bad enough. We'll stand on the list and do that election day. You know, other than the traffic and concrete truck coming in, I just don't see why it takes six months or a year or two years to pour a little concrete pad into the roof of it. It doesn't take that long. It's just we try to um, we try to go by priority on the list, and I would say that um, we tried to get some other projects finished first. And but I'll I'll reach back out to her and see if she's ready. Her, I mean, you know, her and her daughter, our voting machine can get wet or whatever it is that she, she carrying it in the warehouse. But one of the most frustrating things that I've experienced in my time with the board is how long it takes to get things done. I'm not fussing with you, but we, we depend on the inmate crews and Mr. Oakland to do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like books. Very cool. And it would be beneficial to our local contractors and our local community financially if we did our <coughs> job on books on some of these smaller jobs and go in and get them done. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what, what we did. Yeah, that's what we did at the court complex. Well, that's what we did out here at uh, Pioneer. Mm -hmm. We've got a block man in there, and he did a wonderful job. Got a couple of stuff. Well, I, I was wondering, Right. 
skill set of the inmates that we receive now versus the inmates that we received 10 years ago has greatly changed. Decreased. Well, well as, far as, skills, as far as masonry work, electricians, things like that, my understanding is that Mr. Oakland has to teach them everything. He has to show it to them, and then they're helpful, but in, I, I would say that there are times in certain processes where they are standing around because they're not very helpful. Right. But then when they're, you know, mowing or, or doing something else, that's something they can do. Um, it just well, you've got to dig a ditch to run a wire now, and yeah. they're helpful there, so this uh, Right. You know, you've got to shovel and in, and so yes, they all dig a ditch. Right. Well, where are they going to go? I don't know yet. So well, I want my sister to know. Thank you. 
or some projects that you would have particular interest in. Now, um, let me let me ask you to look at number six because there has been some interest. You know, we've talked about paving roads. So, as an example, number six, there are there are projects for dirt to pavement road projects for stormwater management and to prevent runoff from flooded dirt roads to flow into adjacent tributaries. Okaloosa County currently has an approved project where they are using their funding to pave a dirt road because when there is um, when there is flooding that this causes sediment to run into a tributary and, is, and eventually makes its way to to the to the Gulf. Mm -hmm. So that would be an example of a paving project. So like to make a bump house around TEB boat ramp, how could we incorporate this into that? There's not a paved road there now. But there's not if even a road back there. There's not? I would, I don't know. So are you talking about TEB boat ramp? Right now on TEB, to do a bump house around it. There's not, that's not, that would be dirt to pavement. I don't know that that would qualify and my, that's something that we can certainly present. We can certainly ask that question. My initial feeling is I'm not sure that that would be approved because there is there is access to the to the boat ramp there now. Now this would obviously improve the access to the boat ramp, but I'm not sure that to me is a gray area. Also, my understanding is that the property at the Kennedy Coastal Park is ecologically sensitive. That's considered wetlands, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know what the permitting process would be. I don't know that that's the questions that I have about a bypass in that area. But we can certainly ask if... Well, until we, you know, find out, the question is going to be out there in my mind, is this something that we can do? So what do we have to do to find out? Well, what I would like to do is to receive some input from the board, and if you have some potential projects, then we can certainly we can certainly research that and see if that's a possibility, and then go forward with if we need to amend the SCP or what we need to do to to follow through with those projects. I think I was going to tell you what mine would be, and each one can tell you what theirs are. As I mentioned last time. I think that we should be fixing what we've got before we start adding more, and that would be the stormwater uh, uh, runoff problems that we have in Stanhope. That would be the traffic congestion that we have at Keaton Beach boat ramp and Stanhope boat ramp. To me, that priorities. I've talked to a lot of people lately, and. Every one of them, I had business owners from Stan Hatchy to call me and said, you're right on the spot with what you suggested. Um, those are things that I, I think that would, if, that would be something I'd like to see. Uh, I've also discussed with a lot of people lately the Hodges part, and many people have said we would like to see Hodges part um, renovated or tore down and, and put a top notch uh, park there. Lots of families use that park. We have visitors from all over that go there. So I'd like to see um, Hodges Park done. We've talked about dredging the Keaton Beach of the canal. Um, we talked about Spring Warrior. Um, you know, that's a area that's away from the congested area that might be worthwhile uh, considering for smaller boats. It's already got a uh, water access there. The more I talk to people, and nobody knows, but it's the consensus of most people that with our precious grasses that we have in this county that we'll never get a permit to dredge a canal and they go back to the $10 million that Dr. Pruitt spent and with the clout that he had and, and it wasn't done. So 
I'm not sure that, that that's something that we'll ever get. But that Pam Siegel, that's her, that's my thing I'd like to see done. Now, that even line, everyone. We are currently, we currently have in our budget a million dollar project for dredging, Eaton Beach Canal, and um, at least part of the Nasty Canal. This is a reimbursement grant. So all I would know to do is to ask for the board to input their pro to give me their projects and then rank them. So we can so we can plan financially for what you want to do first. Say and I you know, I would say we need to take into consideration how much that costs. I don't know if you well, want to say No, no, I'm saying dredging is funded within our budget. Okay. But none of these projects are. You don't know the list of pounds and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Well my priority would be the storm water because we have people that have water in their home. That's important to me. Now on the storm water, just to make you aware, um, we had an LMS meeting last week and it was consensus of the LMS group that we apply for a hazardous hazardous mitigation grant um, to to start this process as far as storm water um, improvement county wide. But my suggestion to the group was to consider using our our BP money for the Dean Hatchy portion of it, since that is the coastal portion and possibly T and D, or to use it at least as a map for our H and BP fund. So um, we believe, from what I understand, we can use these funds as map funds for other grants. So that's something to keep into consideration, and we'll know more about that as, as the process goes on.
their their contract and dredge the canal um, portion. They were going to dredge the channel. We were going to dredge the canal. But at that time, it wasn't that bad. So um, I don't think the discussion went any further. And now that we're ready to dredge, the last time I heard, they did not have funding available. All right. We've got a top one money.
that is the way the original budget was structured. Um, so the reason that that was submitted that way is my understanding, I wasn't here, but the original committee and then our, the, the information that was given to the consultant was that we were interested in acquisition and we wanted to use every dime of that money we could to buy property and even if it meant we spent $4 million on acquisition and we just let it sit for years. That was the original plan from what I understand. So no, not much money was budgeted for construction or for feasibility studies or engineering or design work or any of that, which is why we need to amend the SEP. So once I receive input from all of y'all, then we'll know which direction we need to go with as far as amending the SEP. And then we can go through that amendment process. And as part of that process, we will need to amend our budget. Okay. Okay. Does that help? So I didn't help me and it and what Commissioner Murphy said we back all the back to square one. Because of the two one on the year plus. I mean, we had two plus within what, seven days?
flooding in my district that people have their homes have been, you know, lowering their homes. So, um, and I'm sure all of yeah, us have said that. And that's why I discussed the hazardous mitigation grant program. Yeah. Um, and there are several, I mean, we can use, from what I understand, we can use these funds as matching funds for some for other projects. Okay. So we'll look at that okay. as well. Before, before you may come around, um, I, and I think all of us got an email from uh, a group that sent us in Hatchie. I don't know if you've seen that email. I've read it. But uh, uh, Mr. Long, I think is his name, he's, um, I understand he's fought property down there, maybe in some low-lying areas, and somehow or other they're connected with engineers or something, and they are wanting to propose some sort of um, storm water system down there, and I understand from some of the, my friends in St. Hattie that they've had a petition going around for people to sign it. Some of them told me they did not sign it. Um, and so now this email says that they're having a special public meeting inviting us to and inviting us to go. And my understanding is that whatever this independent group is doing, it's kind of self-serving, and I understand that it would not help the people on Central Avenue. So I just want your opinion about us. I don't have any intentions of going, but I just, you know, do you have a word of caution? Yeah, of course. Don't go. Don't go. Right. I they, want, if they want to do something, come to us. Well, they're, they're on the agenda October 7th. So I did email um, Mr. Keith and asked him if this was the same presentation that they would be presenting to the board on October 7th. And he said, well, it's not the same because it's a longer presentation <laughs> because of time limitations. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> if they're on the agenda, though, I mean, well, they need to tell you how long it's going to take, you know. Yeah. Then you need to hold them to it, whatever it is. And I, I, I haven't seen the email. Would well, you forward, um, I just want you to see that because I, I just, you know, got a little leery mm -hmm. of an independent group that has some solutions maybe that they want to. They want to buy that. And, but I think they may want the county to help with some things. Uh, and so I just, you know, I'm real leery of that. And, and they all have that. Yeah. Do you have that? Yeah. Do you have it? Yeah. Do you, do you um, can you send it to me? What? Do you have they all have it. It's got a list of names. Thank you. Yeah. My whole oh. district has grown up when you get the place to the 
just above the... Uh, this way you talk about this man, the Walking. Walking. I said, well, I'm coming to town after nine, I'll look at it. When I got there and I got out that car, that grass was that deep. Monday, they were cutting that They were cutting it down, man. That's right. I've been over there every day this week, and they were on it. So it's been grass, it's grass, and you Okay. Good okay. Any more discussion on uh, uses for the um, the store at night? If not, we'll go to our last item, which is number 10, the board to discuss legislative funding request for a fiscal year 2020. So I took note of the um, funding requests that were submitted to me, and I noticed that there were quite a few road improvement projects. And I recall last year, I think it was last year, we had a meeting with DOT and we were encouraged not to request earmarks for DOT projects. But to, I wanted to clarify, because I know some of y'all maybe have spoken to um, our representatives mm -hmm. about particular projects. I'm good. <laughs> You're allowed. I just wanted to make sure I could clarify. Okay. Um, I spoke with Representative Cho's office. They reached out to DOT and spoke with Ed Seifert, who, um, who gave us some guidance. And then today I had a conference call with Dave Surinette and Kim Evans. And they um, wanted to request that rather than, if you would, rather than submitting um, individual projects, especially the ones that we've already we've already listed as priorities or maybe programs or on the five year plan that um, they wanted to reassure us that they would work with us to meet our needs. And where we could make the most difference is if we request more funding from our legislators to be um, to be sent to DOT because they can make sure that they meet our needs, they feel like in the best fashion. And the reason that they explained to me is that um, earmarks don't come with extra money. Um, they, so they have been used, they have been forced to use reserves to pay for earmarks the last year or so. And they do not have any more reserve funding. So if we were to receive an earmark from our legislators for a particular project, Either another county funding would be cut short, or a program that, or a road that we already have programmed and possibly you have an agreement on, that funding would be cut. So um, I think the bottom line is that rather than taking the risk that our projects that are already that are already either submitted to DOT or programmed, rather than take a risk that they would be reduced. I would like the board to consider instead of us submitting these projects that we instead, when we have our legislative delegation and when we speak with our legislators, that we ask for extra funding for for DOT so they can properly manage these projects. When we talk to our legislators privately, ask for extra funding for scrap and scope or just for 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 road for, for road safety, yes. rural county. Because there's scrap, there's there's scrap shop, and then there's two other programs. I know there is um, there's one program that funds like the sidewalk projects that are going on, and there's the trip project. It's it's funded that way. So um, and and that's ultimately up to you. I just um, wanted to bring that up to you. Five Okay. So if we take out the road project from the list that I have. That leaves courthouse improvements, including security upgrades, um, doctor's memorial hospital funding assistance, 
designed the equipment. So I do believe that we have um, an avenue for, for that type. I mean, we can ask, but... Um, there have been counties that have gotten near marks for fire station. Mm -hmm. It would be good to have, you know, just like in Keaton Gage and, mm -hmm. and uh, other places that... I know that um, we have several fire stations where we could mm -hmm. use some improvement. So well, I could grow the fire station to get that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wood Creek grow the fire station. Is that why we need a new station here there at home? Is that what it means? That's what it is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Wherever it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that'd be a good one to put down an earmark for. Okay, so yeah. the fire station? Right. Okay, and then courthouse improvement. I know yeah. last year. We're talking about the West, uh, West Station up in South Wood Street Road. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, it's the fairest people invited across the highway as well. And I was told by a previous administrator that he was interested in getting an earmark for one or more fire stations in Jackson County. So I don't know how hard you're going to get him. He replied to me, or I understood him to say, something to do with them. And the mark.
Is such a project as that uh, something that would be considered? Mm -hmm. I don't think that courthouse is big enough. You know? oh, I will but tell you one thing that I would like to see done. An assessment done for mold in that courthouse. For what mold? Mm -hmm. And you know because the, the basic area is the low ground level. Mm -hmm. so it's the inside. And I can't tell you how many people over there, how they kind of walk in the building, they get issues. It's in all the offices. So I would like to do that assessment of that building.
don't know. Yeah. They may submit them in our Thank you. 